Instead of looking at a painting this week, since I'm a little bit pressed for time, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at the, the three distinct orders of classical ancient Greek architecture. And the names of those three orders are the Doric, the Ionic, and then later the Corinthian. And those three orders, as I said, were developed in ancient Greece, but they were later adopted by the Romans, which occurred in about the first century BC. And then these three Greek classical orders have consistently since then been used in neoclassical European architecture. And you'll see examples of these columns everywhere. And uh, that's really what neoclassical architecture is. It's incorporating these ancient Greek and also ancient Roman classical orders. The Romans adopted the Greek orders and then kind of refined them, but incorporating those ancient styles into modern architecture as well. So look around next time you see a building with columns and see if you can identify uh, which type of order it's based upon. Okay, the first order is the Doric order, and this originated from the mainland and western Greece. And it's the simplest of all of the orders, typically characterized by a, a short, heavy column with a plain, round capital. And there's some terminology associated with uh, architecture, and specifically columns, which I'm going to introduce you to here. The capital is just the rounded top of the column. The Doric columns typically don't have a defined base or plinth. Um, some of them do. Obviously, there's a lot of variation, but traditionally there was no base. And the height was also traditionally only about four to eight times the diameter of the column. So the columns were typically very squat, very fat and short. Of course, like I said, there's a lot of variation on that, and they aren't necessarily always between four and eight times the diameter today, or even back in ancient Greece. But originally, that was what you were going to see. And the shaft, or the, the rounded body of the column, is channeled with 20 flutes, which are those grooves that you see in the side of the column. The Ionic order was distinguished by slenderer than the Doric uh, fluted pillars that had a, a quite a large base as opposed to the Doric order with really no base. A large base and then two opposed volutes or uh, that scroll shape that you see at the top are called volutes in the echinus. And the echinus of a column is just the rounded molding or decorative top portion beneath what was called the abacus, which was the slab that formed the uppermost uh, division of the capital of the column. And the echinus is decorated with what's called an egg and dart motif. And this isn't maybe the best picture, but um, you can kind of see why it would be called an egg and dart motif. That alternating kind of oval or circular shape with that arrow type shape. And the ionic shaft typically came with four more flutes than the Doric. So it had 24 little flutes channeled into the column as opposed to the 20 that we saw in the Doric. And the column of the Ionic Order was typically nine or fewer diameters. And so here's another example. I've kind of been trying to show you uh, an example from classical Greek architecture, um, and then an example in neoclassical architecture. Oh, and I had to throw this in here. This is actually where I go to school. And then the third and final order is the Corinthian, which is the most ornate. And it's characterized by a, another slender fluted column, like the Ionic Order, but it has this very ornate capital or top uh, decorated with these two rows of acanthus leaves and scrolls. And here's some detail maybe that we can help. The acanthus is a type of plant, um, but it was incorporated into the, uh, the architecture of ancient Greece. Into the shaft of the Corinthian order, like the Ionic, typically also has 24 flutes. And the column is usually a little bit higher than uh, either the Doric or the Ionic, typically about 10 diameters high. So one last thing that I think maybe is worth mentioning is uh, this church, which is remarkable in that it actually shows all three orders of the classical Greek architecture on different levels. The columns on the ground level, the first floor, are Doric, the second level, Ionic, and then on the top, Corinthian. And this is the church of saint gervais saint Prote in France. Anyway, next time you're out and about, Check out some of the columns on the buildings and see if you can identify which classical order they belong to, Doric, Ionic, or Corinthian. Have a great week, everybody.